Our discussion for the next two days is effective implementation for industrialization and inclusive economic development. Like I said earlier, we have many distinguished Nigerians here. It's my um, privilege to moderate this session. I'm going to start it asking the African Union Commission to tell us what message do you have for this event. The African Union Commission is very excited to participate in this forum, which we consider to be a very important sensitization or engagement with stakeholders. The Nigeria-African Continental Free Trade Agreement Forum is happening today at an opportune time as we embark on the decade of action to accelerate implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals. Let us be determined now to create confidence in the African economy and the ability of Africans to run things for themselves by making this work. For a successful implementation of the African Continental Free Trade Agreement, government has constituted the National Action Committee to, amongst others, coordinate a wild range of actions at the domestic, regional, and continental levels. The AFCFTA, in there, the objective for every country is about industrialization, food security, agricultural development, and then a very important regional value chain development. It is about really intention. It is about coming together to be able to compete with the rest of the world. I think the, the, the nexus between peace and security uh, on the one hand and trade on the other, I think it is even empirically uh, proven that more trade is better for security than less trade. When you have an interest, uh, when you are trading with your neighbors, you become a stakeholder in the peace of your neighbors and the other way around. We need to look at who are the players in AFTA that could probably help to alleviate poverty. The one tool that has never failed anywhere in the world to, to, to deal with poverty is job creation. It is key for us now to start preparing in terms of implementation, we have all the ingredients. Like we concluded at the end of our study was that we were not ready because some of those things that we require are still not in place, but we also recognize the fact that at the end of the day, it is a human problem and that where there's a will, there really is a way. Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, good morning again. Uh, I have the privilege to moderate uh, this, uh, this uh, plenary this morning. And the subject is ECOWAS responding to implementation challenges in West Africa. Uh, for the ETLS, there is a big problem, but it's a problem that has to do with uh, trade agreements. Agreements generally that uh, uh, those who negotiate are not the implementers. In West and Central Africa, women represent nearly 60% of informal traders. In South Africa, they even represent as much as 70%, which shows that uh, these are a very critical segment within this uh, uh, trade. The, the truth is a majority of the trade in Africa is informal and it could, it could um, help in lifting people out of poverty. It could help in bringing people up to power to where they should be. But if our preoccupation is just to formalize them, then we're not looking to incentivize them. We noted that the Western world, Western countries, namely America, Canada, Russia, UK, and Germany, are already positioning themselves to help in addressing 
infrastructure. If you really want things to move, I am not sure how you're going to do it successfully without a very, very strong and virile media campaign. This goes beyond stories in the newspaper. There should be predictability. I should be able to stay in America and predict what happens to the port when I come to Nigeria. I should be able to tell a consultant, say from Nigeria, can be working with another company and tell them, you know, these are the things I expected to do. This is the time it will take. And when the company comes to that, they should be able to see that. But if you're not able to predict the system, therefore no investor brings in their money. The second thing, if someone said that we don't have the investment policy, so I just wanted to explain to him that the Nigerian Investment Promotion Commission exists and there are policies around what they do and they have tax incentives that drive investment. The 100% repatriation of profits all fall under that framework. And we have a network of bilateral investment treaties all over the world called IPPAs. It has been a, a very intensive two days of uh, discussion. Um, my own assessment is that the um, uh, Nigerian policymakers and stakeholders um, have done the analytical part of what the FCFTA means for Nigeria um, and uh, what should be Nigeria's response, the kinds of strategies that are needed to be put in place. So what we are seeing here today, you know, is far beyond, you know, our own expectations. So we've done quite well and we're very, very happy with the outcome of the forum and we hope we can take it to the next level. Taking this from now, we will now go down further at sector levels, have detailed engagements to further break down what has come in here, what, what, what the outcome of this workshop, the, the outcome of the studies we've done, the information that we will gather from engaging uh, those sector uh, stakeholders and, and, uh, and practitioners to then say, okay, these are the things that we need to do. So you, you, you have a series of engagements to be able to do that. The government has to address our infrastructural problem. If I'm going to look at it as a clear scale of preference, I'll pick infrastructure. That government should address infrastructure number one. If government ad um, address the infrastructure, if manufacturers are able to produce at a low rate, definitely will be competitive. To a very large extent, we have achieved our objectives in the sense that we have the relevant stakeholders from the private sector, from the public sector. We are now able to forge a synergy that will allow us going forward to do what we need to do to achieve success. It's very easy to append your signature to a document, but you need to walk the talk. And I think this platform has created an environment for us to understand amongst ourselves what government needs to do, what the private sector needs to do, and those gaps that need to be filled. Because like I always said, nobody told us in Africa not to trade among ourselves. It is those binding constraints that has not allowed us to trade that we are seeking to overcome. And we must put that forward as we go into the commencement of the agreement. You know that from this, from this meeting will emerge uh, a work plan for the National Implementation Committee. So now it is this meeting now that will tell us, one, you do this. These are the indicators of achievement. These are the partners um, you know, that you are going to use for it. So we will divide all the work here and we'll start implementing. We as the United Nations system then will step in well, shoulder to shoulder, uh, we will hold the hands of, uh, of Nigeria, as it were, and offering whatever it is that uh, needs to be offered in terms of assistance and technical support.